Awesome. All right. We got everybody here. We're good to go. We're all noggled up. This might be the most noglified episode of Zero Pod so far. I, I don't know if we've had it where every single person on the pod has had the noggles on. So well done, everybody. A lot of nog. Nice. A nog. Tim's dream. We're all wearing his noggles. <laughs> wow. I'm realizing mine are so reflective that I've got to be careful what screens I have open. I'm going to close all my, my down porn. What is yeah, that incognito? Real. What's that incognito tab I just saw open? <laughs> Board Ape no. Yacht Club. What are you looking at? No. <laughs> Welcome back to Zero Rights Reserved, the podcast about nouns, DAOs, Ethereum, NFTs, and more. Brought to you by the Noun Square Media Collective. I'm your host, Tony Hawk. Our co host for this week is Joshua Fisher. And our wonderful, wonderful guests are Chris Waters and Eric Towner from Stupid Buddy Studios. You might know them from some awesome creations such as Robot Chicken, Marvel's Modoc, Crossing Swords on Hulu, uh, all the costumes from Fox's Mask Singer. I bet you didn't know that one. And of course, a full feature length documentary about nouns that is going to be released soon, TM. I think we're going to hear more about that today as we get right into it. So welcome to Chris and Eric. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Awesome. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. Pleasure to be here. Awesome. So that's me. That's all I'm here for. So I'm going to leave you with Josh. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, Josh is doing Josh is doing the interview. This is going to get control. <laughs> Who is this guy? I'd love to hear maybe the backstory on, on this dynamic duo. I'd love to hear a little bit about how Stupid Buddy came to be and, and how you guys came together and sort of what's your artistic journey? Can you tell us a bit about it? Oh, where to, where to begin? Uh, We're going yeah, my, way back. We're going way gosh, back to the... You, you go where, back... What, to, where did you go to high school? <laughs> <laughs> start, with the Winne, start with the Winnebago and we'll go from okay, there. Okay, okay. We'll skip high school. We'll go to the Winnebago. Uh, yeah, I'm, in a previous life, um, I was... Uh, I was a full-time animator, uh, really working. I, you know, I was animating on early seasons of Robot Chicken, like season two. Um, got my start there, and me and an animator buddy of mine. This is like circa 2008. Um, thought to ourselves, "Gosh, how hard could it really be to run and own an animation studio? That seems easy. Let's do that." <laughs> um, terrible timing. This is like <clears throat> right before the entire economy crashed, like later in 2008. Luckily, the first iteration of the studio is just out of a garage. So very like startup story, you know, working out of a garage. The the uh, Winnebago was our first office. So in 1972 Winnebago, which we purchased on Craigslist for like a thousand bucks for a project became, you know, kind of like our headquarters, like our, our mobile headquarters. Um, and luckily, we we outgrew the garage space uh, within a couple of months. Um, By the way, very nounish. To have very, a yeah, very, for very nounish beginnings. Like, feel very kindred spirits with uh, with this community. Um, yeah, it's like the opposite of Walter White. It's like pure joy and happiness no, happening inside. No, the, that, the that thing is, we absolutely should have been cooking meth out of the Winnebago. Like, <laughs> had a much. Well, I was going to. I was going to ask. Been potentially you. lucrative financially, but I don't no, know. that's how you should fund animation and passion projects. You know, before nouns out is uh, with by, meth. Yeah, drugs should have been, should have been our path. I had down here. What would you change if you could go back? So I'll just cross that one out. Um, yes, <laughs> Matt, the Winnebago would have definitely been the in hindsight twenty twenty. Do you guys still have the Winnebago? Like, we have multiple Winnebagos. We have oh, it's in the dock. It's in the dock. Are, You'll see the dock. Yeah, yeah. They, we actually we actually drove well Winnebago V three to the Rose Parade that morning. It was like four thirty in the morning. I'm like, we got a we got a lot of shit we got to load up. We got all these noggles we got to take. We've got oh, costumes, you know. We needed some space. And as I was driving, and this thing is kind of a kind of a bumpy ride. I'm like, this is and parking. There is no parking. You know, there is no parking. I'm like, this just seems sketchy. I don't think we're gonna get in. This thing could very well break down on the on the way to Pasadena, even though it's like a you know 15 mile drive. Uh, luckily, it all worked out perfectly. But yeah, I feel like a Winnebago is like a like a ladder. Like you know, you they say if you have a ladder, you can walk into any venue. Like if you pull up in a Winnebago, they just like kind of like assume you're fine. Like yeah, that's like, yeah, yeah. We actually, actually did that. We did that. We did that. We, we definitely were like, oh no, we we belong here. Like yeah, we're, we're the Winnebago we're, crew. Like 
would we be cool. driving a Winnebago if we weren't like staff? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Not only that, I'm also holding a clipboard. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't get more than that. Get anywhere with a clipboard in Winnebago. It's past course of life. That's right. I've heard the clipboard one before, not the latter one. I feel like Joshua might have been making his life a little harder than necessary by always carrying a ladder around. (laughs) When's the last time you carried a ladder? They're never. (laughs) That's the point. Like, if you show up to the venue with a ladder, you're fine. Yeah. Yeah. That's how Joshua also, got into the short shorts. A reflective vest and a mm-hmm. helmet. I think that too, you could pretty pretty much go anywhere. Because people are like, oh, that's let me actually see how I got into the Rose Parade and ended up walking next to the, the floats because <laughs> I just had a ladder and they just let me walk wherever I wanted. That's actually that's actually why he almost got run over by the float. He had a ladder on yeah. his shoulder and he was like uh, yeah, was, a little bit heavy. off balance. Heavy. <laughs> All right. Uh, we've gone firmly off course already. Our Winnebago is already in the ditch, but that's okay. We can. <laughs> We can tow it. We can tow it out. Um, all right. So you mentioned that you were doing some animation on early Robot Chicken. What was it like to to start your own studio at that time in animation? You mentioned the economy wasn't great, but it was kind of a great time for animation. It was, you know, it was an exciting time. Like everything was really exciting. We were, you know, we were just doing. We were just so boldly going in, into uncharted territories. And I think again, the hindsight thing is, yes, we should have been cooking meth, but. The other thing is, if we knew what we were doing and if we knew how hard the business side would be, we might not have done it at all. So it's just like one of those things of like being kind of uh, blissfully naive is just kind of gave us the the that feeling like, well, we've got nothing to lose. Let's just take a stab and see what happens. Um, and it was great. And it was, you know, like all the projects were, were really exciting early days. Everything was was super scrappy. And I feel like we've you know, kind of stayed close to our roots of like when when we can and when we need to, let's just roll up our sleeves, let's get in there, uh, let's make things happen. Um, so that that hasn't changed. And like culturally, I think we always um, had this idea. Well, let's let's create the studio that we as animators or as artists would want to work for. You know, and this is again like in our experience, we had worked at studios where it's like, wow, let's see how much money we can make. You know, it's run by people with like real estate backgrounds or, you know, they just didn't really connect or they maybe weren't passionate about the work that was, it's, was actually being done. So, you know, part of our ethos was culturally like, let's just make this very artist friendly. It's like, uh, I think Gandhi once said, uh, be the studio you want to animate for, I think. Yeah. Was that- very, yeah. Very Thank famous you, quote. Yeah. That inspiration. Towner actually mm-hmm. has that uh, Gandhi quote tattooed on his arm. <laughs> Did we see that? Can we get a tat? A tattoo tour would be really good for TikTok, actually. Yeah. Get that. No, I just don't want to like do the gun show thing, like people yeah, think because yeah. yeah, okay. the muscles are actually really big. We, so obviously, Robot Chicken always comes up because it's such a, an awesome show that you guys did. But you've done so much. I'd love to ask you each individually. What's your favorite project that you've worked on that's not Robot Chicken and not the noun stock? Sure. Um, I guess I'll go f- first, Chris, because I think you know what my answer is going to be. Um, I I directed, and this goes back now almost ten years, um, a project called Micro Mayhem. Um, that if you search for like Micro Mayhem Vimeo, it will be the first thing that comes up. It's like a two minute short that was a real passion project of like using my childhood micro machines. Oh, nice. Uh, as like a stop motion animated kind of love letter to like um, car cinema and chase cinema. Um, That's cool. And we came up with a like a camera that was small enough to make a micro machine look, you know, big or big ish. And, and so that that's a project that I've loved being a part of. Um, since we did that initial short, we have developed this out into a full series that um, Chris is a big part of. Um, Chris, I don't know what we can say what we're doing with that right now. <laughs> It's in the, it's in the, yeah, it's in the oven. That bun's it, in the oven. So, so was this in cooperation with Micro Machines? Like they were on board with it or are you just going to use them as a prop? Uh, you know. That same? <laughs> they, they, they love the creative, I, I'm sure. I'll say um, the, the first iteration was actually with uh, a Micro Machine that's on Towner's desk right now. But subsequently, we've designed all our own cars and... 3D modeled them and printed them and painted them. And it's a slightly different scale than Micro Machines and just a different look. But that's okay. the original car. Again, if you're watching this podcast, pause, go look up Micro Mayhem Vimeo, and you'll see it was a Vimeo staff pick. 
And it's the reason that I met Stupid Buddy. I love that short. So Towner, Towner says that, uh, which is also my favorite thing we've ever done. And, and uh, you know, it's very difficult to make shorts and to get people to fund making shorts, which is why we've uh, been doing that through Nouns. But we finally, I think, figured out a way to get that project uh, into the universe. So hopefully- uh, you, got the, you got the wheel spinning, as it were? We got the wheel spinning. We're in the driver's seat. Um, you know, we're, in, we're, we're out of uh, neutral. We're in- Off to the races. Yeah, any off other, to the races. Any other cliches? Um, like but to... then also- Tony, you a... keep going, just do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the puns just, they, you know, they drive some people crazy, but- yeah, uh, <laughs> But switching lanes, uh, another another favorite project. Is, I'm just trying to say things that people can immediately go watch would be Blark and Son, which is a, a another I think Hallmark Stupid Buddy project, and that it um, is just looks different. It was made like Micro Mayhem. It was made um, in partnership with uh, Ben Bayuth and Adam Azaraf, who Ben was our head of puppets at Stupid Buddy, and um, the guys you know loved what he was doing. And it was, a, it's a basically a family show about broken families. And it's about this um, ancient Vietnam vet dad and his doughy video game playing son, who's played by Chris Smith's class. And it's just a really fun exploration of what it means to create without the guardrails of a network or anybody um, getting in the way in terms of notes. And again, sometimes notes are great, but it's also really fun to just make something. And for that, we made 50 shorts, put them on Instagram. And we got more funding from go 90. If we all remember that platform and we made a bunch of eight minute shorts and then go 90 went under and they gave them to us and we sold them to comedy central and then comedy central ordered more shorts. And That's then cool. now we just uh, are in process of delivering um, some more content for that. And hopefully it will live on in, in another form, but that one I, I'm really proud of just because um, it, it really connected with audiences. I think it, 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 really um, had a big impact in terms of just the comedy, but also the heart of the show. And so it's everything I think entertainment should be and comedy should be, which is funny and irreverent and silly and crazy, but also make us feel a little closer to each other and not a little less cynical. So those would be, those would be a couple Chris, of projects. Really everything we do, I love. <laughs> when you did those, those projects and you got to work with all those different animators, like, um, could you speak to any of the impact that it had on them, like getting a, being able to do shorts and being able to just express yourself? You know, I, I think, you know, Eric, what you're saying about just being able to have that creative freedom was like one of your favorite moments, even though you've done amazing things that you're really proud of and that I'm sure you have a lot of fun doing just that complete kind of like, well, yeah, like the buck does stop here with me because I'm just making this. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, Towner, I feel like you're an animator. You should answer that question. Just like, what's it like when someone's like, here's a check, go make something. <laughs> it's it's just a very rare opportunity. It's a very special opportunity to to be funded to make something of your own. That's a passion project. Um, so much of what animators will usually do, and, and myself included, is you just you just ask for for all the favors you cheat Rob Steele to like see your vision come to life and you're like literally rolling up your sleeves and doing everything and that's you know um I was working on a short when we you know outside of my day job at Robot Chicken I was working on a short which became the catalyst and the reason that we bought the Winnebago was to make this short um and I remember uh needing to like you just can't do it for free like that's the thing is like you know you're either reinvesting your own time or your own money and it can, you know, there's a lot of animators that I've known that could spend four or five years making their passion project. Mm. Uh, and and there's something to be said about like to to actually be funded and to be given a, a legitimate deadline. Mm. Like deadlines are great because your idea may be so of the moment or so relevant that if you spend four or five years on it, then then maybe it loses its like part of its magic. Um, which we, you know, which we that kind of might, hard to uh, capture the zeitgeist on a four to five year. Yeah. Holiday. And we've noticed that in like just going the traditional studio route of pitching ideas. And it's like, God, this idea would be amazing now. And then cut to like six months of getting a deal done and, you know, a year and a half of like development and notes and navigating all that. And the project could be great, but it could just be slightly less relevant at yeah, that time. Towner started doing a project in you in 2019. And it's almost ready. It's about a global pandemic. It should yeah. be <laughs> no global perfect timing. 
It's yeah. about preventing one, you know. Oh, but right. we're, yeah. Sorry. We're yeah. Almost, yeah. 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 Just in time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I, I remember, you know, just asking, you know, friends to help finance my my parents instead of like any anything. I was just like, hey, what about you know, like invest in this project because this project could be the beginning of something, and and really hustling, like really hustling up, you know, like ten thousand bucks or even even less than that. And that went into the project. And then, you know, it just so happens that that project was the first project we we sold as a studio. The Winnebago became the office like we made the most of that of that money. But I think that what we're doing with the shorts program now and the opportunity we have to enable amazing animators to realize their passion projects and have, you know, have some money to do it. And, and everybody's going to go above and beyond because because it's theirs, you know, and they get to express themselves fully. It represents who they are. So we know everybody's going to go above and beyond, but to, to have some resources to get something done. Um, speaking as an, as an animator, I think it's just such an incredible opportunity. I can't even really think of one historically that's existed the same way. I mean, there's, there's been networks that have done shorts programs um, where there's some, fi some financing and money available. And, yeah, they uh, want and control too, to some extent, right? Yeah. And, and then also they come with strings attached. So it's like, we'll fund you to make a short, but you need to run every process of the, the stage of the process through our, our um, system. And then also we own it at the end of it. Yeah. Right? Oh, by the way, <laughs> it's our yeah. job. Yeah. So <laughs> thanks for your storyboards, all your characters. Are all thanks for your best idea that you've ever had. Like, kind yeah, of like so, the opposite of CC0 in a way. The, the opposite <laughs> of CC0. And again, like, that's no knock. That's their business model. And they, they live and die on IP and, and things like that. But I, I think that is a system that's, um, you know, increasingly owned by fewer and fewer conglomerates and big corporations. I know when we've sold stuff and we try to negotiate, you know, the, the definitions on things, these things are like sent to us as like photocopies of PDFs, not even PDFs. And they have no power to change those deals because those Wait, deals- Wait, do they fax them to you? Yeah, the, it, all it is to say is there's not a lot of uh, negotiation that happens around key terms in those kind of deals. So again, that's the business model. I think where nouns can come in is um, nobody is doing this. Nobody is doing what nouns is now committed to do through the passing of this latest prop and, and the original one. And what we're excited about is we, we approached 20 artists the first time around to do 17 shorts. Um, Almost all of them said yes. There were a couple of people that that I think just wanted to wait and see. And I think after seeing the stuff that came out of the first one, they'll be on board in the second one. But I think, you know, being able to attract some of the best animators in the world to give them the gift of creative freedom and community, like a community that's going to embrace their ideas and community with each other. The fact that this is part of a very cool alumni association now, if you've done a noun short, yeah. all of that. And then having now real resources to actually do a really cool festival, like those are all just things we're so excited about. And we think really make nouns, you know, I think you always got to figure out like what, what can nouns do better than anybody else? And this is one of those things that this is, this is uh, something nouns can really do and only nouns can do because they don't have the same considerations that big giant corporations have. Yeah. When I was listening to uh, Eric just a, a minute ago, I was thinking that that you could use like the motto of like, we're trying to make this so that no artist ever has to call their parents and ask for money again. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> no artist yeah. ever has to ask their parents for ten thousand dollars again. No, no artist for... needs to cook and sell meth. Meth too. You know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I should have never brought up Breaking Bad. I should have just never brought that one up. <laughs> I mean, you set us on this course. You set us on this course. So yeah. The takeaway from the podcast: the town of regrets not selling meth. <laughs> That's, I mean, that's definitely going to be one. the coin. That's definitely going to be the coin telegraph head, head, headline for sure. No, no, no. So we we skip ahead a little bit here, but I think that's okay, and I think we can maybe have a, a broader conversation ab about this prop and the previous prop, and then come back to the documentary a little later in the interview. Um, so what we're talking about here to reset for the listener is proposal three ninety seven, which just passed last week, uh, called noun stories, stupid buddies, shorts galore. Uh, this is the second prop that uh, Noun Stories has had passed. Maybe we could just take a quick uh, retroactive look on the first short shorts prop. I don't, it doesn't matter to me which one of you takes the question, but if you can just sort of give us a quick 
um, explanation of what that one was and what you guys did. As a, as a quick, just aside, this is actually the third Nine Stories prop. Uh, prop 20 right. was Sorry, the yeah. original Nine Stories prop, which resulted in the Wizards hat, which then got rolled into this program with Stupid Buddy and uh, Walter Newman and, and Joel and myself. And so this is number yeah, three. Yeah, good point. Mea culpa, you finally stumped Toadie. You did it live on, on uh, Zero oh, Pie. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, okay, so Eric, Eric, maybe can you tell us a little bit about the first short shorts and, and how it culminated with the festival and just how it was working with all those artists? Um, yeah, I mean, and actually we, we had done uh, Prop 73, A Stupid Buddy. That was our first proposal, which was the, the Float in the Rose Parade and yeah. doing the, the documentary about that. The documentary is... 99% done, which is very exciting to us. We're officially submitted to a couple select uh, film festivals, including South by Southwest. So fingers, fingers crossed, uh, crossed across the board there. Um, nice. I, you know what? I'll actually hand it over to Chris to talk about the first, sure. um, the first Schwartz program and, you know, why we got involved with that and, and, you know, how that, how that all went down. Yeah, um, I think um, just in our conversations with uh, Goldie and and Joel and Josh and um, you know we knew that uh, you know and part of the reason we did the documentary honestly was the the fun thing about nouns is that at CC zero that there isn't this like canon there's no there's no sort of set um, sort of context for nouns it can live in lots of different places and for us it was just like well what what's a way that we can get a lot of different perspectives into nouns and what's a way we can really start to build out the community. I think a lot of people lately have been talking about, oh, why aren't we bringing more, onboarding more people into props? But I think that what they're missing is the people that are touched by the props that are passing. You know, the fact that this is uh, 17 artists that that we funded to make, in, in the case of our, our first short shorts prop, 15 second shorts. Yeah. Um, you know, the, those were 17 artists. Most of them had never been involved in crypto. Uh, some of them were very skeptical of crypto. Certainly none of them knew anything about nouns. We had to teach them all. Thank God for Joel, who <laughs> patiently walked them through how to sign up for a wallet so they could get paid. That's but, awesome. Uh, in U.S. dollar coin, by the way, if you're listening to this, uh, we're paying in U.S. dollar coin so people aren't, aren't uh, being asked to, you know, bear the risk of, of, you know, fluctuating prices of ETH and all that. But, you yeah. know, it was really a way for us to onboard people into a community that felt like um, really spoke to their interests, which was, hey, are you interested in making a short? We'll pay you to make the short. You can have all the rights to the short if you want, or you can make them CC zero. And um, I think w a testament to how enthusiastic all these artists end up becoming, we had two shorts that were 15 seconds. The rest of them were like 40, 40 seconds, a minute, over a minute. Everyone way over delivered and went crazy. And yeah. even the ones that were 15 seconds were two of my favorites. I mean, and, Patagraphs. <laughs> and technically, Patagraphs was a loop, too. So you could also... It's still going. Yeah. But that is the longest by far. Infinity it seconds. Is, is, yeah. Towner actually hasn't stopped watching it. So that is, uh, <laughs> I think we're now into... It's as long as The Hobbit. It's Yeah, uh, I see the reflection in his glasses there. <laughs> <laughs> it, it'd be interesting to like fund, fund them to do more frames. Because like yeah. that, thing could, that thing could evolve. For yeah. a long time. Yeah. I it would be definitely fun to bring back. We we were Town and I were talking to Sam Cotton, who's one of our um the guys from the first short shorts and by the way, yeah. I was a big fan of his before I even saw that he was involved with short shorts. Yeah, I saw yeah. he right. came across my TikTok feed and I was like obsessed with his stuff. Yeah, yeah, he's he's fantastic. And and again, like someone that had never even considered this this uh this path. And through that he's met Rich Weber, who's another artist that we brought into this and um, and, and so all, all these artists are not talking to each other. And, um, so, but, but yeah, I think the, the, the idea was, you know, we all talk about the, the, what I call like the elasticity of the brand, the fact that nouns can be so many things and it can express itself in so many ways. But I think that became real when we did our festival night at brain dead studios in LA and simulcast it in Australia and, and at uh, Goldie studio pixel. But I think people like now 40 was there by the way, Fox was there. There was a Netflix exec there. Um, you know, people saw these shorts and it became not just an idea. It became like a concrete, tangible reality that nouns worked 
as you know Ainsley did a really cute little kids uh, thing with his four year old son, right? And then you had Greeny who had someone like snorting a, a chopped up ticket of nouns and turning into a goat, like, but not yeah. turning into a goat, just his head turning into a goat, which <laughs> again, for Greeny, like all of us take it for granted that it's like, it's not like you turn into a goat, it's just a goat head. He thought yeah. that was just fucking absurd. And he, he it is. brought absurdity into his short. And it was like, so it was just so fun to see all of these different expressions, not just in terms of medium, but tone and audience and, but they all felt right and they all felt right together. And I just don't think there's another brand out there that aside from the funding, that's just that elastic and that works that well across formats. And it's a testament to, um, you know, the, the, the nounders and just this idea generally, and then also just the design and how much it inspired a whole, you know, whole array of artists. So that was our experience. I think it's been seen by over a million people, you know, all the shorts combined, we let them obviously post on their own socials, which, again, is a way to expand reach so that it's not just going through our socials, you know, through noun stories. Yeah. So, yeah, it was That's a great really cool. Yeah. By Tyler, way, what, what was your favorite part of that experience? I just, I just loved, like, every time a new short would come in, I was just so um, surprised and delighted. Like, they just mm -hmm. all made me either smile or laugh or, you know, or inspired me, like, in, in ways I wouldn't have thought of or it's, like, even even you know Ainsley's short was so touching and and so great that we're we're now like okay how do we how do we take this idea and this artist and and um like back him give him more firepower to create create great stuff because you know i mean entertainment's entertainment but um it can also be the most influential thing out there is is when you're when you're watching something versus being told something and it either makes you laugh or cry or, or whatever that can be incredibly influential. And so I think as we're thinking of these proposals and we understand uh, it's a big ass, we understand it's ambitious and we always put ourselves in the shoes of, of the voters and of the Dow. And you've got to ask, okay, what's really in this for the, why is this good for the Dow? Why does this make sense for nouns? And I, I just so firmly believe that, that enabling artists to do this, but also having nouns kind of be the brand sponsor of it and working in noggles into the designs or working in the characters or some of the art that is a big part of nouns. It just makes it just makes so much sense. Like there's going to be, you know, hopefully, you know, if all goes well and according to plan, some pretty big cultural impact of what we're doing and what we're enabling people to do and having the noggles just be a part of each and every one of those films that even on their own as any any of these artists are sharing on their social media um, there's something that will get their audience to connect whether they know it then in the moment or like later on like thinking oh you know i've seen that what is what is that thing you know uh, it's just kind of cool how these little like concentric circles just being planted all around the world can kind of spread and overlap and um, see each other grow or help each other grow. One of the ways that I started framing Prop 397 as a voter is that, you know, if nouns needs to spend, if that's, you know, if that's really our our goal is to spend and find big bets to take and proliferate the, the meme and, and fund public goods and do all these things, but do it faster than, you know, some financialized faction can come and, you know, arb the treasury away. Uh, part of the way that we can do that efficiently is by allocating funds to certain, you know, pods or people who are experts in, in their field. And, you know, a good example of that is funding NARS now, because obviously NARS can do a better job within that subgenre of skateboarding, et cetera, than, than nouns uh, proper can do. And so it makes sense to sort of allocate those. And I started seeing your prop as the same type of thing. It's like, you know, it's like a, a $2 million or $1.7 million animation pod by nouns with stupid buddy at the helm and, you know, great, great builders like Joshua and Joel able to go out to artists and be like, Hey, are you looking for a way to get your, you know, your animations funded? Cause we've got this program and stupid buddy is involved. So it immediately has that reputational cachet. And, and for me, that's exciting. Cause I think, You've already shown that you're able to attract really top talent that way. And I'm excited to see what kind of talent you attract in this next bigger round. Yeah. And Walter's a big part of that. Walter Newman, too, who spent um, the last decade at, at Adult Swim with Mike Lazo and, and the whole team there and, and was instrumental in developing 
Rick and Morty and, and just, a, you know, a host of other incredible shows and has a deep talent network as well. So I think we've got certainly the right people to attract the animators. And, and I think you're right. I, you know, I mean, look what happened with esports and big ups to Sasquatch and, and uh, yep. Brennan and that whole team, like their, their Dota team just uh, is, is uh, rampaging through the championships there. And like, again, you know, that's a evolving landscape and a changing landscape. And I think that's another area where nouns can over kind of um, punch above its weight just in terms of um, its ability to fund teams and, and also rally a community around it. I've never cared about esports until now it's got into it. Now I'm like, Oh, this is, this is awesome. And I'm going to follow this team. So yeah. yeah, I think, I think we can be a similar pod where again, you're, you know, for every dollar you put in, we're bringing in a bunch of people um, to, to get funded. And so in some ways we are like a, a distribution platform to get that money out and deployed to a ton of people from all over the world. We're really going to focus um, on making sure we get artists. Town and I were talking about this artists from, you know, all, every continent. We're, we're looking. If there's any animators in Antarctica, hit us up. Um, we'd love <laughs> to fund you. Um, or if someone wants to just move down there real quick, just so we can say we hit every. <laughs> yeah, I would love for us to. There has to be an Antarctica. Yeah, yeah. Uh, animation community somewhere. So I, you know, <laughs> you can call then, it. You can call it Arctic. I don't know. Art, That's Art, right. Art, 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 Art. There's a Reddit. There's a subreddit somewhere with that exact title. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, there is a, I've just discovered the animation subreddit on, on Reddit and I'm like, oh, this, we did not utilize this last time. So we'll, we'll, uh, we'll make sure we, we hit that right. too. Um, yeah. Very cool. So this newer prop obviously is bigger than the last one. What are the, the big hairy goals for this initiative over the next year? Is it over the next year or over the next six months? Next year. Next year. Yeah. Um, longer, like a few longer shorts. I think um, Walter in particular was was really pushing for that in terms of just making sure, you know, with, with, with some of the short shorts, you get like tone and you get like a vibe. But I think with a with a two or three minute short, you can actually get a story and you can get more character. And, yeah. you know, we saw that with Wizard's Hat. I, I think you know, is, is there, is there something that can emerge from this round of shorts that feels like, uh, the first Simpsons short or the first Rick and Morty short or the, you know, some of the, some of these shows that started as shorts crossing swords for us on, on Hulu. So I think there, that's, that's one component. Another component that we're talking about is theme. So maybe each round will have a, a theme and we, we haven't landed exactly on what that is. All these ideas was people, places, things, but maybe mm. towners kicked around a few ideas to make that even more specific. Um, so I think I think theming it so that each round feels like a little cohesive and it's tied together. I really then, like people, places, and things because it's it's specific enough to kind of give it some, you know, to make things sort of feel similar, but it also gives them a lot of runway to do what they want to do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like I think it it's it's yeah. How do you keep it broad enough? because what we loved about the first round was just all the different interpretations and we don't want to, we won't want to get too narrow with, with, with what we. Was there a prompt first. in that round or no? I can't remember. No, all it no. was, was you have to put a noun in it, noggles, you know, that's it. Nice. So, uh, and then another big thing on this one is stupid buddies going to be making um, shorts in this one. And, and so yeah. Mr. Towner here is uh, going to make at least one of these, hopefully. And um, Stitching the creative itch. It changed exactly. exactly. And it's like anytime Towner's yeah. given given resource and, and not told what to do, usually good things have happened for, for Yeah, us. you can literally do yeah. anything you want. That's the mandate. Have yeah. fun. Yeah, I'm I'm dying to know what he's gonna do. <laughs> we create micro mayhem, we're just gonna put noggles on the front of all the dollars, right? I'm here yeah. for it. Well there yeah. was that there is amazing. that candidate there is that candidate prop for the sculptress to do the, the smallest noggle sculpture ever made. So you could Take his sculpture, put it on a micro machine. Now, yeah. now you got a, now you got a stew going. Exactly. <laughs> well, and, and I don't know if people know this, but um, if you watch the Rose Parade, Towner's wife Kiki wrote uh, a couple of the theme songs that we ended oh, yeah, up yeah. putting out for that. So maybe we will rope her into into some of that as well because she she's the very nounish herself. So yeah, that, I'm just really excited to see what That's Stupid amazing. Buddy um, does with nouns, and obviously we've spent two years like deep diving into this world and we have so much love for 
um, the community. Mm -hmm. and, and so, yeah, it'll be fun to make, make some cool stuff as part of this. You do well. have some like dance choreography in you. I, I saw Mickey and friends and they, they were hitting some moves in that one. So I know that you guys, you know, maybe some music, you know, will work out in, in the show. Oh yeah. For, for uh, oh yeah. That's me. The last, yeah, if you haven't watched trick or treat yet, go to Disney plus and watch uh, Mickey mouse trick or treat. Uh, it's really good. It's really so come, fun. How did this come? The to transformation be? scene. I love it. I, oh, I love no, the it's transformation scene. That thing, that thing oh, turned Josh, you're the best, man. You watched it. That's great. Yeah, I haven't yeah. seen it yet, but I will for sure. It's on uh, Disney. I think it's on Disney Plus. Is that right, Chris? Yeah, Disney Plus. I think it's on Hulu as well, and it aired on on Disney <laughs> Junior and Disney as well. Yeah. yeah so how, last, um, how did that a, show come to be? I'd love to hear that backstory. Oh, we, a little bit. We've had a long a long relationship working with uh, working with Disney. Um, that originally was, gosh, I feel like a. Uh, it was a short. It was a short that we did in stop motion. It's kind of the first time that Mickey Mouse was ever officially sanctioned to be interpreted mm. in stop motion. So we got nice. to be a part of that, Ooh. which was really cool. There was a lot of R and D into like Mickey's ears and how when he turns his head, the ears always have to be facing at camera a certain way. This is like it, this is like the Noggles problem, actually. A hundred percent. Like Noggles might not look like Noggles in profile and Mickey Mouse's ears in stop motion don't look, they, you know, they don't look like yeah. his ears. So we, we came up with this whole like magnetic system. Like as he turns his head, the ears would actually continue That's to awesome. face to face camera. So that um, minute long, uh, you know, kind of commercial, you know, just turned out they, they just loved how it looks so much. So that led to doing. Uh, yeah, you had to like hire, you had to hire like DARPA to build the puppets <laughs> for this thing. Yeah, it was Awesome. Yeah, basically, yeah, lot, lots of lots of uh, inner workings going on there, um, but that led to doing a Christmas special last year, the Halloween special this year, some more shorts and, and things for the holidays this year. So it's just been a Very long, cool. a long lasting relationship where we do we get to to work on some. Yeah, it's how so long fun. before yeah, you can like, cool. how long before you can like sneak some noggles onto Donald Duck or something without them noticing. <laughs> Oh, man, I think it's like if, 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 <laughs> if one of the if one of those like people on the sidewalk had noggles on, I don't know. My, my I don't think you would. Look, you know, I feel like there's a good history of of Disney animators working things into the background. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. Maybe yeah, we, I, I believe clouds are their main medium. Yeah, what the I tasteful see. thing is to just put some <laughs> noggles and piles of leaves. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you know, anything's possible. We're always thinking about nouns. Yeah. That's yeah and if they problem. challenge you on it, you just be like, I don't know what you mean. He's just wearing glasses. It's very normal. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, last, last thing, just to finish off your question, Tony, the other thing is um, we just have a bigger budget for, oh, uh, first of all, um, we're going to be building a website. Joel is going to be building a website. And, awesome. um, you know, and, and Josh and team. Also, just making sure publicity is stronger this time around. You know, we have budget for a publicist, which last time it was just us calling friends and, you know, mm -hmm. um, the, the, the outlets that we know. And then also we just have a more robust budget for um, the, the actual festival this time. So we I'm sure we'll probably rope in nouns on the ground and and but we want that to feel like a big event and um hopefully Maybe we should live stream it on uh, the now square this time too yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. we should be, uh part like you know an understated part of the proposal and something that could be culturally the most significant is the in-person event that that we want to do the in-person festival i think anytime we can get people from the actual community or people outside the community to come together and experience yeah. like we just saw it at brain dead even on a on a smaller scale like the significance and the importance of that so doing that just in a way that really celebrates all things nounish all things that are happening um in the on the animation side um and within the community i think it's gonna and also like how to make this event as absolutely nounish and fun as possible is something we're going to be spending a lot of time thinking about in the next couple of months yeah just, yeah, just think about person. this the, if we go to Annecy, the total population is 125k. We, we could have 10 percent of the population if we bring 10k noggles out there. <laughs> we'll get the fun frames by Clem and everyone. Yeah, and we'll yeah. get 10 percent. That's a, that's a fun stat. If you're gonna yeah. do that, I think you should do a town where you can literally do the whole town. Like it's <laughs> gonna be the it's gonna be the only thing happening in this town in Ohio. 
on that yeah, day. Yeah. And just everybody's yeah, wearing Nuggles. Everybody's wearing Nuggles. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> catch it on uh, catch it on Google satellite view. Um, but uh, no, cool. sorry. I, I'm just saying, like, you know, I, I think to Eric's point, like, there's just so much cool stuff that could come with this, you know, meetup type energy in, in these, like, live events. So it's it's going to be fun. And and I do think, too, for this prop, something that's important to me is, like, the people doing it are funded to do the work, right? Like, I think a, a lot of times there's this expectation for, like, people to do things on their free time but when you get to a certain level in your your career like there's not that much free time so if you want you know really smart people to think about this thing like it's the right thing to do to like fund that time because that, that even just thinking about it is work it in, in itself so i'm super excited to see how this all plays out i think there's so much potential here yeah, I don't. I, I'm not looking forward to getting uh, Chris and Eric's bill for this podcast. It's gonna be, <laughs> it's gonna be the rest of our budget. No, so you, you always get us for free, Tony. You always get us for free. <laughs> awesome. Any other um, forward-looking sort of projections for this? That's a very corporate way of putting it. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> well, we're, 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 we're synergy. Um, give us a give us a rundown on Q4 for the short shorts, please. <laughs> We're going to circle back on this uh, in about a, a year and we'll see how we did. But, uh, you know. um, I, I don't think so. I, I just big thanks to, to everyone that, that um, voted on this prop. Big thanks to 4156 for sponsoring it and putting it on chain. And for people like now 40 who um, a have just been super important voices in the documentary and important voices in the community, but also like, ask good questions and push back. And ultimately, um, you know, I think through conversations ended up voting for it, but it was just like, I think that part of it was fun. It's fun to get pushed back. It's fun to have people challenge your ideas. We, we um, definitely got feedback before we even put this on candidates. So for everyone that weighed in and, and just like stupid buddy in, in particular, I think, cause we can speak for stupid buddy, not for Josh and Joel and, and Goldie and everybody, but the community has been great to us and shown us a lot of love and we are very grateful. Amazing. Well, that's probably a good sort of transitional point to talk a little bit about one of the reasons why 4156 said that he, he wanted to sponsor that prop and one of the reasons why 40 voted for it as well. And that's because they're super excited about this documentary that you guys have been working on for over a year now. Is that correct? Yeah. I'm trying to think started, my head. started yeah. shooting in June last year yeah. so. <laughs> so it's been pretty cool it's is it still called nouns around town i know that was a working title i don't know if that's still the uh, title. it's it's got a different name are we are we putting the name out there yet towner i don't know i'll, I'll leave it Ooh. to Towner. oh geez. come on give me some alpha come on <laughs> we're we're thinking of calling it shark pickle cone i love it, love it. i love it because yeah. those are the three nouns that were on the rose parade float yeah. right yeah. Yeah. And it, when we think it's weird enough that if you saw a movie called Shark Pickle Cone, you would at least be like, what the what the fuck is that? You would at yeah. least take the time Love to it. click do not like on Netflix. No, I'm yes. just kidding. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh, I love sharks and pickles, but I hate cones. I'm so conflicted. <laughs> you just can't win. You just can't win. Yeah. yeah. We did a lot of market research and the Venn diagram of things everyone loves is shark pickles and cones. So uh, oh, it's exactly. sure to appeal to everybody. <laughs> One, one for those food in the middle is just, yeah, that's, that, that's actually what they're replacing. The, they're replacing the food uh, pyramid with that, I think, actually. Yeah, yeah, of course. The three food groups. If you're not so, eating shark, you're not getting the right kind of protein. I'll just say that right now. It's, uh, <laughs> it's very important. Uh, we probably have to cut that out in post. The environmental is going to cut it. I don't think you can eat shark. It, there's an important question. Is it like spaces, commas, slashes? What, what's no. it? <laughs> You can always get on Josh for Fisher to dig, dig deep and get the real answers. Deep. I think it would be dots. It's I think it would be like dots. shark. Yeah, shark. Uh, the shark is Comic dots. Sans. The cone is Papyrus. And uh, <laughs> Pickle yeah. will probably be one of those really silly fonts. You just say Comic Sans, Papyrus, and then the silly font? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the silly one It's like the web dings or whatever. Where it's... Silly font, Times New Roman. <laughs> yes. It's, yeah, it exactly. says cone, trust me. Who uses that? Who uses that? Helvetica. Oh, Actually, there probably is a cone wingding, actually. Those, like, YouTube pickup emojis? No. Like, if you did shark pickled 
cone and it was like all emojis as the title. Oh, oh yeah. I don't know. I don't know if that's, that's like cool or not cool, but yes, emojis in, in uh, GIFs are my favorite. I can't help it. Yeah, I mean gifts, whatever. Yeah, it's yes. definitely yeah. gifts. Actually, this was on my list to discuss. Yes. So, is it GIF or is it GIF? <laughs> We're gonna get to the bottom of this today. Yeah, I mean, it's if it's, it's you, uh, like a global survey, I feel like it's still fifty-fifty, right? Like, oh, do you mean a you mean a global, global yeah. a global yeah. survey? Yeah. A global. <laughs> <laughs> a global survey. That's funny. I took a global survey, and and ninety uh, percent of people said it was GIF. <laughs> <laughs> so this <laughs> this documentary uh which we just got the name for or the the new working title which is exciting um so this also was born from a proposal and it also meshed with the second proposal that nouns on the ground was involved with uh to basically go and put on this uh amazing parade float at the rose parade can you talk a little bit about that and what that was like working with another prop builder and bringing that together uh, you know, to hit the vision that you were hoping to hit for, for that piece of the back country. Yeah, I think that was just a great example of seeing different parts of the community kind of rally and come together for uh, a common goal and a common vision. So, you know, we did through the documentary, we do get to to follow Optoshi's journey and and what that was like from her perspective, which I think really um, helps kind of ground and humanize you know the the DAO in in an interesting way that that anybody really anybody can be a part of this thing, and I think that, yeah. that was um, that's really cool to see. So then, I mean, really, the initial vision for this documentary and what we sort of you know as we put together the budget, we're like, oh, this is going to be a great like twenty thirty minute uh, documentary. We're going to follow Stupid Buddy doing something they haven't done, and it's kind of interesting to to get a look into like how you actually get a float into the parade. That was like the initial scope of it. But as I think, as we got into, you know, hundreds of interviews and I think we had la ha have like 50 or 60 days worth of interview footage and just footage from the community. Wow. And every, it just was like, this is and when more you said days. You mean like 24 like hours of footage? Days. Like you, it would take you, two months to watch all of the footage if you did nothing else you how know how do you do that like to take a quick aside i often wonder that about documentary filmmakers and like just okay to give you an example like editing the podcast is difficult sometimes because you just kind of take an hour and a half and and sort of you know distill it down i have no idea how you guys take like days of footage and find that well, clip can, that you thought yeah, of i mean you could turn it into transcripts you could turn yeah. it into transcripts and then search yeah. the transcripts so yeah, that's so cool. Your Oops. editing is going to be really easy for this podcast. So you're just going to cut it down to Towner saying you should do math. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, really yeah. It. Like it's going to be a five second. Podcast. That's right. Yeah. It, it's going to cost in three line. I'm pretty <laughs> sure. I'm pretty sure that AI could do it for me. Yeah. This time. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, really early on in the process, um, you know, Chris and I went out to New York and those were some of our first interviews. That's where we met. Uh, uh, Josh interviewed him for the first time. Optochi met her for the first time. And we quickly realized like we um, haven't made a documentary and we were never like, we never hid that, but we did, you know, bring in Neil Berkeley, who's an amazing documentary filmmaker. He did um, Harmontown, uh, the Gilbert Godfrey documentary. If you haven't seen that, that's amazing. I didn't know he was involved in Harmontown. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. He did some so, thing as well, which was. Oh, and that's, that's a great. Yeah. That's a great yeah. documentary. So, um, so he really did take um, take the lead and like, and and he's just such a like. If we're doing anything, he's just what he's like. Bust out his camera and he's immediately shooting it. And I think his so his instincts from a documentary filmmaker's uh, perspective were just were super key. And how he keeps track of sixty days worth of footage and boils that down into what is um, looking like it'll be an hour long film. Uh, yeah. So he must just me, have like a running ledger in his head. He's like, I oh. think so. Yeah. Well, yeah. So. We Tuesday have, at two o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And, and David's yeah. also producing on it. We have some editors and and, but yeah, the the thing I don't think Towner may have known. I didn't really fully appreciate that a documentary is like the opposite of r r like scripted filmmaking in that you shoot everything and then you write it. And so right. we've been 
marketing this thing for six months, maybe a little more than six months. And it's gone through so many iterations and it's, it's, it's a complex story. I mean, at the end of the day, like the float part was the easy part, <laughs> you know, that was very linear, but you know, we always set out to make a documentary that you didn't have to be in the nouns community to find it interesting. And so how do you not get bogged down in terminology? That's very insider. And that's been a challenge. Um, how do you how do you make sure that people can kind of track all the different voices? And then there's a lot of people that are anonymous. So it's been really challenging. We've gone way over in terms of the the, the time we thought it would require to make it, but we want it to be great. We want everyone to be proud of it. And most importantly, we want people that know nothing about nouns or stupid buddy to still find it interesting and engaging and fun to watch. So. For all uh, the non people, did you like pixelate them and give them like a voice modulator so they sound very terrifying? No, no voice modulation. Wow. And thanks to Coral Orca, we're, we're we're using some of his filters and working with Corey cool. from Blue Xanadu. Um, oh wow, that's awesome! Yeah, so um, and and, and Arash too, right? Most of graphics. Arash is uh, supplying some some of his yeah, characters Arash, as well. Arash supplied his um, game character, uh, his his Maya model for the game character, which which may make it in. So everyone, you know, it's part of the cool thing of making something in nouns is everybody kind of steps up and and offers to help, and it's been it's been really fun. That kind yeah. of leads in a little bit to one of the other questions I had about the documentary, which is I wanted to ask what what it's been like to work for a DAO as a client? Because I think that's a question a lot of people probably wonder is like, it's hard enough sometimes to work for a studio or even an agency, but like, what's it like to work for, you know, someone once said about nouns, like how, how would you feel about working for uh, a little bit less than usual for uh, 10 times the normal amount of bosses or something like that? <laughs> oh man, that's a great question. I, I think at first, I know like at first it was very difficult when Towner and I were going to go to NFC, NYT, fuck, and I say that wrong every time. NYC, <laughs> NFT, NFT, NYC. Um, we'll fix it in post. It's okay. <laughs> trying to wrangle the people we were trying to interview, that's when it dawned on us. Like, there's no publicist. There's no, like, there's no uh, HR person. There's no singular person that you can go to. And so that was very overwhelming at first. But we found a rhythm. By, by the way, I'm going to cut that out, and I'm just going to like save it on my computer for every time someone like drops in a Discord. And, like, <laughs> who's in charge of business development at the nouns? So exactly, like, <laughs> exactly. But once you embrace all of the various forms of whether it's Twitter, or I'm I'm pretty big into Farcaster now. It's like you start to find that um, you just have to do a little more digging. You have to DM people. You have to hope they get back to you. Then again, everyone's offering to help. So it's like, oh, do you know Kevin Rose? Do you know this person? Do you know that person? And then sure enough, you get the introduction and once people hear what you're doing. So that part of it was hard. And then I think also there's, we come from an environment where you're getting very strict guidelines and notes. And there's a lot of like direct oversight over every stage of the process. And so having the freedom to, to make this documentary, we, we've definitely shared it with, with some people as we went along, just inside and outside of nouns, just to kind of do a, a gut check of if you're inside of nouns, does this feel like it reflects um, what nouns is all about? If you're outside, are you tracking this? Does it make sense? So, you know, that part of it, I think getting feedback has been helpful from from people that are, you know, vocal and visible in the nouns community. What's but, the feedback been like from outside? I'm really curious to know what people think. That's helped really refine and shape just the speed at which we convey certain fundamental information about what an NFT is, what a DAO is, what digital collectibles, those kind of things is just making sure that they don't get lost in all of that. You know, Towner, are there other things that we took away from? I mean, some of it was just pacing and characterization. Yeah, yeah no, just a, a lot of it was that because there is so much, um, you know, heavy information or maybe concepts that are outside of uh, people's you know, normal view of how the world should work. Like these are some, some, you know, some pretty alien concepts. So just like how that information came across and what was too fast or what was too slow um, from the yeah. outside. That was our goal always and, and still is, is like, how do we make, you know, um, this a documentary that we can, you know, that our parents could watch or, you know, or somebody just that has no idea what nouns is or really what crypto is or what an NFT is or anything and make it, 
digestible and exciting or interesting or at least understandable. So, I, you know, and that's been a really, um, you know, it's been a real uh, threading, threading that needle has been really challenging, but that's where a lot of the feedback has been so helpful. There's a story I've told a few times, but it's, it's worth telling here as well. One of my friends, it's a pretty close friend and he cares a lot about me, but he just doesn't know anything about crypto. And he was asking me a little bit about nouns one time and sort of just giving me some time to talk about it. And I started off as okay, well, there's one NFT minted every day. And I went on and tried to simplify it as much as I could. And I, I maybe talked for two minutes and I could kind of tell he was a little bit lost. So I paused and, and he says, uh, he's like, okay, so you said mint, what's mint? <laughs> right. Exactly, exactly. Like we're, we're in the water. And what I hope, honestly, what I hope, and a couple of the founders have shared this as well, is like, I hope that people, when, especially people that are spending a lot of their life in this community, I hope they can just, when someone's like, what are you doing? I hope they can just show them this documentary and that the people will be like, I get it. And because at yeah. the end of the day, like what most, the universal thing, if you don't care about crypto, you don't care about anything, it, this is a study, it's a game in how to organize, uh, you know, large groups of people with differing ideas and different perspectives. How do you organize those and, and actually create actions that have results that are beneficial to the community and beneficial to the individuals? And you just have to be using tools like the blockchain and NFTs and uh, to, you know, to, to, to finance that. But what's really interesting about nouns is there's just people from Africa, from Australia, from the US, from Europe, from Asia, from, from everywhere, all working together permissionlessly. And that's like, that's, I think, relevant. It's relevant to a world that is increasingly, it's more difficult for people to do that. So that's, I think the story we're landing on is more of just like, hey, whether you care about crypto or any of these things, Look at this group of people that's actually funding nonprofit things and doing open source projects. And could this be a model for how we organize ourselves as NGOs, as anything going forward? I definitely have way more friends around the world than before. You know? Yeah. It's like, I didn't even have just like, I didn't feel like I could just go over to Australia and hang out or like go to Japan and like hang out with people true. that like I already know. That's really um, true. Yeah. It's yeah. cool. Without without wow. traveling a lot, it would take a lot of travel to make as many friends as you can make in now yeah. in a week. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how, cool is it, how cool is it that Optoshi can just be like, "Hey, I'm going to be in Germany tomorrow," and a bunch of people will be like, "Meet up with her," right? Like, yeah. so you know, that that community building and um, but more than that, because you can have subreddits that do that. You can have, but but actually, that can mobilize people and and fund them to do mm -hmm. interesting things. Well, I think Seneca has. Seneca has described nouns that way before. I think it's Seneca who said nouns is like a subreddit with a bank account. And I've always thought that was a, mm. a pretty good a way of putting great, it. That's a great <laughs> way of putting it. That's a great way of putting it. Yeah. That might be in the doc, that quote. <laughs> like this one right now? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah or this one. Um, yeah, but it's been it's been really, Town and I have never done this um, and uh, or built a float for that matter. Um, both things were harder, but way more fun than I think we even imagined they would be. So, and you didn't even run anybody. Sick. You didn't even run anybody over either. Not fully, anyway. Thank God. No. Thank God. We didn't run Josh over. Uh, was, Josh was out for He was out for Only, only almost. Yeah, <laughs> this I, is I was, a... my expectation was we would be moving along at like a like a, a tortoise's pace. <laughs> And once you're going and like the adrenaline is flowing and it's like the crowd is there and everybody's cheering and going crazy, that fucking float sneaks up on you really fast. If you're not <laughs> paying attention, there's a few times I remember looking back and I'm like, oh, I got to walk it like, not just like stroll. We were like going like this is a brisk pace that's what happening. Mean, this is not a short trip either. It's not like <laughs> it goes down the block and then it's over. It's a, it's a pretty long walk and there's people all along the whole thing and you know there's little kids i i had a ton of fun because i would just like point out people that were excited and like point at them and like get them to do something and like i was singing the songs the whole time like i i was just really embracing it and having fun yeah it you was know, awesome there's there's, there's you know. anthropologists who think that humans used to hunt that way you know we would just chase our prey incessantly for like four days really slowly and they would eventually yeah. just give up and die. So that's kind of what happened to Josh. He just was yeah, yeah. slowly chased. 
<laughs> fell over, but we had food waiting for him. Hopefully, at the end at the end of the whole yes, thing. there was food trucks. Yeah. It was fun, and it was so cool seeing the newscasters wearing the noggles and passing out noggles to to all the people in the stands. And it was it was an amazing day. It was it was really fun. It was yeah, time. it was a really a beautiful day. Um, the Winnebago didn't break down. Um, the the bookends of that day in California were so rarely rainy, like just wall to wall rain leading up to the mm. morning of the parade, and then by oh, like, yeah, that's right. Four in the afternoon, it started raining again. So I don't know um, how we got so lucky, but that was yeah. yeah the weather was perfect during the during the like, parade. Now it's luck. The Nounish yeah. gods were with us. Exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. Exactly. That would have ruined all the, the big uh, Nounish costumes and everything. Yeah. You, you know, know yeah. when I was doing that, a lot of people would be like, what is that? And I like, there there was a couple of times where I was trying to like say stuff. And eventually I just said a digital art project. And I felt like that that landed pretty well. I, yeah, I do think sure. that in, in one way, that's really what Nouns, you know, it's many things, but that piece of it is, is really important. Um, you should have just I'm said, shark pickle there. cone. Shark yeah, pickle you would have you would have made it in the documentary. That's yeah. true. It would, have, it would have been great if Josh just asked the prey to stop every time someone asked, and he's like, "Well, there's yeah. this thing called an NFT, which is a non fungible token." Right. <laughs> Sorry, what's if you understand the difference between fungibility and non fungibility? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> want to go down a rabbit hole with me? We okay. put the fun and fungibility. Yeah. Now yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so quick aside about the about the the float. So for a while, the noggles that were on the front of the float were, I think, the biggest noggles, like physical noggles that existed. That That Ooh. is not the case anymore. That's the one piece of the float that we had cut off and still have. Nice. Steel. We, steel frame. We still have. We still have them. But they're big. And they're the, robust. Is that they're, like a lizard? Like you can now regrow the float just using the, the noggles that you cut off? No, that would be amazing. Um. Soon, though. Soon, though. <laughs> <laughs> with uh yeah genetic engineering and crispr and all that that'll all be a that's thing, right but, yeah um but we have these huge noggles we don't quite have the space to store them <laughs> originally should we're we do going... a raffle should we raffle off your yeah, I, I, we need ideas on what we should do with the noggles from the front from the front of the float and how big right, are you now it's community this is your chance to come up with some crazy idea of where we should put these huge noggles they are Big and heavy. Originally, we were going to mount yeah. them on the wall at the studio, but everybody's like, "Ah, you're going to kill somebody." Because eventually, yeah. I mean, Towner, what's your what's your guess? What's your guess on weight? Oh, on the weight, as probably yeah. maybe a hundred pounds. Yeah, at least. And they're least. they're probably what keep like eight, eight, eight feet high or something, like, or how, how seven high? or eight feet, seven or eight feet wide, maybe three or four feet tall. Yeah, wow. red. They're red. Classic red. red. They're, they're covered basically in like a large human-sized <laughs> noggles. Yeah, yeah. they're the size of a yeah. large human. Yeah. yeah, if you if you took them Made on their side, <laughs> it'd be taller than, yeah, probably taller than a human. Most humans. Do so, you deliver them with flowers on them? We uh, there are still some uh, seeds on them. Yes, so it's so a, if you water them, you might be in luck. You might be. You might. Does any Does anybody live near Mount Rushmore? By any chance? <laughs> uh, that would be. Oh my gosh, that's such a good idea, Tony. <laughs> Just throw those on a uh, Abe Lincoln. <laughs> Actually, so. Got to have to give credit to Grumplin. Grumplin had a, a really interesting idea about the Las Vegas sphere, where he was like, "We should just find an angle somewhere in Vegas where we could put about a huge noggle up, so that when you look at it from a certain angle, it looks like the sphere is always wearing noggles." So I don't know if these are big enough for that, but I guess it depends how far away you are. But... Yeah, it depends on how far, how far. You... <laughs> so maybe yeah. it can be done if you're in Vegas. Us... You can find a place. Yeah, tell us your ideas, everyone. We we uh. We got to figure out what to do with these giant noggles that can't go on our wall because they're too heavy. That's cool. All right. So next step here for the for the short or for the doc, sorry. Uh, you mentioned that you've already submitted it to some of the festivals. How does that process work for people who are not familiar? Uh, it sounds like you've had to submit a like a, an obviously not fully done version for consideration. Yeah, so you, they're used to getting rough cuts. Um, like Towner said, it's the the edit was. The edit's really close. We still have VFX and things to do on it, but um, I'm watching but, uh, a pirated version right now. It says for your consideration on the bottom. Is that yes? Is this yes. The... So how that works is you submit it, and then uh, by by probably for for the for for the ones we've submitted to so far, early in the year we would know which ones we get into, and um, you know, and we'll just keep submitting. There's tons of 
documentary festivals, their South by their Sundance, all those. So we have a whole list, our agency, UTA, the good folks at UTA are helping us navigate all of that. Since again, we've, we've not done that before. And, uh, yeah, we'll cross our fingers and hope, uh, you know, the, the screeners at these festivals find this uh, compelling enough to put in their lineup. Yeah. And then yes. our goal, I mean, our goal beyond festivals, I mean, festivals really help legitimize the project, the film, um, all of that stuff. Um, our goal remains to get it as seen as by as many people as possible. So our hope is that, you know, by way of festival, we would find some legitimate distribution um, you know, so hopefully you'd find it on, on a popular streamer or just, you know, it becomes really accessible to, to audiences everywhere. That's a, that is, or, a, that is we could do a draw proposal and mint it. I mean, well, there's lots of ideas yeah. or, or both. I mean, you know, I, I'm, I'm curious, like when you submit to these places, do you ever get feedback and then, uh, like apply it or is it kind of just like, yes or no? I think it's yes or no. Yeah. Cause they're getting, they're getting quite a few submissions and um but they're not grading I'll, your paper they're not just... no yeah no notes no notes uh it's just a it's a thumbs up or thumbs down that's it and usually if it's a thumbs down it's not because they don't like the film it's because they they have a different agenda for their lineup or you know it just doesn't it doesn't fit what they're going for that year it's it's rarely like this is a bad you know a bad film or anything like that so what kind of categories are you submitting it for i'm not familiar with a lot of the categories oh just in these... just documentary documentary just yeah Documentary. Yeah. Yeah. and yeah. documentary feature which is pretty cool um yeah. originally we we're thinking documentary short but because of the running time feature it is what's the what is that distinction is it like the hour mark or is it I think it's 40 minutes okay i think like that nice UTA cool. is i like the name a lot that's, that's really fun yeah i think it's really absurd so that's that's a good thing yeah yeah it it, it feels nounish it feels nounish yeah. yeah. Somebody asked in the uh, comments whether um, IP or CC zero is better, and we all we all probably have opinions on that. Um, Towner, do you have thoughts on how you would answer that uh, IP versus CC zero? I mean, I think it's still TBD, right? Like the mm -hmm. CC zero. I love the CC zero nature of nouns and a lot of you know other NFT projects, uh, cryptodes uh mfers like though the, like why not you know it's so hard to regulate that stuff anyway um so I, I i just love the idea of like building a brand around something that can be given away and used however um people see fit like that just seems like a great way to um proliferate something and get it out there um but when you're talking about like being disney and you know, running a business and keeping lights on and doing all the other things. Like I also get like the, the needing to be able to control the rights and, you know, sell something. And, you know, if somebody's like using something of yours without permission to crack down on them. So I think there's a, a, a you know, really a place for both to exist. Yeah. Even, even within nouns, I think one thing to dream about in the future is some uh, noun show on, Nickelodeon or Cartoon Network or, or Adult Swim, right? That, that, you know, that, that could be its own thing that has its roots in nouns, but that has copyrights and trademarks and people that that's mm -hmm. the funnel point for somebody to, to be like, Oh, what's this nouns thing. And so I think even nouns, I don't think everything that nouns kicks off needs to be CC zero. Um, but I do think we're inspired by it, um, with the shorts and, and, um, and I think, the ability that nouns has to say to an artist, we'll pay for this, but you can do with, with this as you please. That is Disney can't do that. Yeah. And uh, Nike can't do that. Right. But nouns can do that. And so that's just part of its DNA and part of the culture of nouns as well as part of the, just the, the way it's structured. So that's, that's really cool. So I think yeah, you want to get kind of like, I mean, you think of like how Disney actually built their empire and they used a lot of stories that were in the public domain. Yeah, you know, like almost that, exclusively early on. Almost yeah. exclusively, they're like, "What what stories can we use for free, and then mm -hmm. take our spin on it?" But you couldn't like Wizard of Oz, right? Anybody, anyone could do their their interpretation of the Wizard of Oz, but you can't necessarily. But you know, when they made the original, those those songs are now part of 
you know, that copyright that, that, you know, you can't use those songs. So same thing with, with nouns. If you think of like nouns is like, okay, this is a public domain artwork. Anybody can use it. But then, um, if, you know, if somebody did want to like Nickelodeon wanted to, to do the, the, the show with the noggles or the nouns or whatever, that of course they're going to want to own and control parts of that. But, um, I think, I think this is part of the experiment. It'll be interesting to see where it all goes. Have you guys ever considered uh, like releasing all of the raw footage? Obviously the, the stuff that's like, you know, synonymous people, like maybe you could release it with the, the filters on already, but you know, I, I just think there's something really interesting about saying like, here's all this footage we captured. Here's our version of the film, but like, and letting anyone tell that story with all those assets. I don't know how that would work, you know, if you're selling it. Cause I think at least for me, like that number one goal is the most amount of people to see the thing. You can't get certain places without doing those rights deals, as you mentioned. Cause like even just like legally, like there has to be rights in place for them to use it in certain ways. So, um, but outside of that, like all that extra footage, does that all kind of automatically get wrapped up or does that potentially some of that you could release to people and let them remix it and use it however they want? Like if it wasn't used, uh, just thinking out, out loud here, because uh, I'm always thinking about how do we build that foundation of yeah. like footage yeah. for people. There's like a dream that like college students can just use like just a, a huge dump of raw nounish footage to like make their, you know, experiments and stuff. It's a we really need, uh, yeah. we need cutting room cutting room floor WTF, I think is what we need. Yeah. I mean there, it's funny because there are so much so many fascinating interviews that may not have just fit the context of the story we're telling. Like we interviewed um uh Balaji, you know, and we, we so we've got an oh, wow. hour like interview that could just be its own podcast on its on its own. It's like that's a great episode of of a of a podcast well if you're um, looking I, for a distribution partner for a <laughs> yeah. podcast yeah, you, i know, you know a guy okay yeah keep us posted with who that might be yeah it's a <laughs> it's a good thought josh there's there's a ton of great content and a lot of people gave up a lot of time to talk to us on multiple occasions so i think when we get through this phase of the process and we we kind of figure out where this home is for this thing um you know i think i think there's definitely um, conversation to have around what to do with all the great, all the great content and so nice. many like interesting people and things like that. And yeah. You talked earlier, Chris, about things that nouns can do that other studios can't. And to me, what Josh is suggesting is has the potential to be a superpower for something like nouns, because if the next people that go to make a documentary can just look back on what you, how many days of footage? <laughs> A what lot. is that, 30 Probably days 40, or whatever? 40, I think, or something like that, has last be checked. If they can do that and you've, like, given them some kind of a permissive license to use some or all of that, I mean, that's, that means that people can make something really incredible and, and repurpose that in, in new yeah. ways. And to me, that's and kind of way, exciting. It's already happened. We we gave Goldie footage, and, and I know he's Amazing. used some of that footage, and, and, and vice versa. Goldie, Goldie's been great. Um, and there's and other super- experiments with, like, CC BySaw and, like, different Creative Commons licenses you could think about. So, you know, that, yeah, I, you know, Nouns is so interesting because we get to even think about this type. Like, there's, yeah. like, By most the way, if places you just feel like, yeah, right, that's a non-starter. Sorry. <laughs> One thing we haven't asked you guys about, I don't think, is uh, how many walk-around Nouns are still in action? You you make it sound like they're like in battle. Like how many have come back? They're from just the walking. War? They're still walking they're around. All six of them are ready to go. We're, they're walking they're, around. Yeah, there. Yeah. No, there's six um, amazing costumes that are cryogenically still, frozen. Cryogenically <laughs> frozen. You've Maybe seen, unnecessary, but yeah. If you've seen uh, Demolition Man, that's exactly what's happened to our nouns costumes, and they're. Ready, to, you know. I think just waiting to be thought out for the right um, event. I haven't seen Demolition Man. I've seen Encino Man. Same thing. I, Same thing. I just had a, a, a funny idea about the camcorder now, where he's like sitting around, like real depressed because like no one uses camcorders anymore. He's just like seeing everyone <laughs> use their phone as a camera, and he's just like, "Damn, like my day has passed." I'm like, "Oh, you know, that's hilarious." No, but we actually uh, funny, funny story. We actually shot some of the documentary footage using camcorders and like old old school devices so there's, oh, there's nice. just to like vary the footage we did a lot of this the, the riverside chats and 
even Zoom before we started using Riverside. So one, nice. we, we sort of embraced the um, just the 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 variety the of ways that yeah that we can capture footage and you should and do an ad spot for microsoft no wait who owns zoom with their own thing right if yeah. you could be like zoom sometimes we even use zoom it yeah. be a good <laughs> when all else fails i guess we no, can use when zoom. we have to <laughs> <laughs> when 4k zoom. doesn't matter <laughs> zoom it was a pandemic <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Awesome. Uh, well, one other thing I did want to touch on quickly, we are a bit over time and I know you guys have uh, probably really important work to do, like finishing the documentary, et cetera. So I don't want to take too much more of your time, but when uh, Josh mentioned CC0, it, it sort of triggered me that I wanted to ask you about what it was like working with all of the different artists on the short shorts and sort of trying to introduce them to CC0. And I know you were actually quite successful in, in um, convincing many of them to give it a try as an experiment. What was that like? And, and what was their, you know, what was their feedback like? on that process? Uh, well, first of all, I got to say, um, really, Joel spearheaded a lot of the uh, conversations around A, just helping people set their wallets up, and B, talking to them about CC0. So, um, you know, big thanks to Joel for doing just Just generally, Joel was a, was a superstar um, in, in that first short shorts thing. But I think, I think because they had been given so little constraints the artists um that by the by the end of that process and and this time we're going to do a much better job of talking about all these things up front <laughs> i think the like minting and all the things that we were like well by the way do you want to do this and they're like what but um but i think people sort of just embraced the, this as an experiment and i think that we had built so much trust by that point and they, they had seen that um who else was doing it and all that but um but Joel would probably be the best one to answer that question because he really was on the front lines. I don't know, Towner, if you have any perspective there. I was um, surprised and kind of so happy with how many of the artists decided, yeah, CC0, yeah. let's give it a shot. Yeah. You know, and I think it'll be, yeah, it'll be the same. Uh, we'll take the same approach this time. And, and Joel will definitely be a lot of the spearheading those conversations. And hopefully we get similar similar results. Um, but again, I, I, leave, leave it kind of up to the artists what they want to do with with uh, with the CC zero of it. Yeah, I feel like uh, Zora Protocol Rewards opens up a whole new uh, area that you guys can sort of experiment with too. Is just say you know make make this mint free. We can really push it and just see how popular yeah. it is. Because if people are at that festival and you just say if you like this, you know, and mint it for free, you know. These these um, artists could be getting two, three, four, ten ETH just over time from people. We're getting their... a, a really close to wallet abstraction too, where like people are going to be able to just sign up to Zora with an email and mint. Yeah, like that'll real. be huge. That'll be yeah. huge. I think just that that process is such a barrier to entry right now, and I think the stuff that Zora is doing to make it much more consumer facing and consumer friendly, as well as artist friendly, not like just to be able to set these things up without. Um, really needing to to uh, to do anything more complicated than sign up for like a Gmail account, right? Like that's that's the goal is yeah. frictionless. You know, we're actually going to be implementing pretty soon uh, Mint with Meth too, which is which is uh, going to be a pretty big. <laughs> um, uh, I don't think Jacob's going to like. It. You better cut that one. <laughs> you mean mint flavored meth? Love this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, meth is just meth is just short for minting ETH. And maybe no, yes, yes. Yes. Oh, got it. Got it. The method. Yeah, it's, new, new it's like you know, um, you gotta agree. Safe. Like that's just what we do now. Like who's got the time yeah. to believe? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. well, guys, uh, I appreciate your time. Always, it's always fun chatting with you guys. I wanted to ask one more thing. I'm wondering if we could all renoglify for a second and just take kind of a snapshot that maybe we can use for. Uh, for, for the YouTube. Let's nog up. Oh. How many pairs of Nagos should I wear? How many do you there's, got? There's a guy on uh, there's a guy on TikTok who do, does this bit where he's pretending to have a podcast. And what, one of the things he does is he always starts the clip with like three pairs of reading glasses on. He and just then takes as, them. as the interview goes on, he'll take one pair off and he's still wearing glasses. <laughs> Such a stupid bit. That's really good. That's awesome. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, Tony. This one's for you. Switch my oh hat. 
Coors, the Coors Light sponsorship, too. Hey. Um, there you go. Are we noggles? Are we noggles? Are we doing, we're doing like double noggles. We're doing triple noggles. All over. Little crypto. Now, there, now, now everybody but Chris smile because it doesn't matter at this point if Chris is smiling. <laughs> <laughs> Don't see his face anyways. Awesome. All right. Well, on that note, on that ridiculous note, I uh, appreciate you guys so much. I, I honestly, I cannot wait uh, to see the doc. I'm super excited for it to come out. So please, please send it to uh, to my Gmail directly when it's finished so that I we'll can. We'll mainline it to you, Tony. We'll mainline it to you. It's <laughs> mainline. We'll send you, we'll send you a copy, Tony. Uh, in your... In your van, right? Yes. In the in the Winnebago. Yeah. See you later, That's everyone. Good. See you later, Ooh. everyone. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> I didn't know we were having a swag off. I didn't come prepared. Go Gammy. Go Gammy. Oh my god. That's a pretty good one. Oh wait, wait, wait! I got this exclusive. <laughs> Sedina Rose Parade football. Oh yeah. Oh, that's pretty good. That's Mama. pretty good. Yeah. Well, I was about to go get my frog. Okay, I'm, there's no point now. I'm just yeah. looking out swag in my own arena. Uh, all all right, I gotta, I gotta go, guys. But yeah, see you guys. See you. Thanks so much. It's fun. Really Peace. fun. Talk to you soon.